Why is, oh, hey everybody, guess what? We're back. It's Friday afternoon. Look, I have to show this one more time because we're pretty excited. Look what I have. Do you know what this is? Anybody know? This is from the Trader Joe's opening. So if you like Trader Joe's, it just opened today in Franklin. I just thought I'd pass that along. <laughs> nice. Holy smoke. That's huge. I just shared something Michael did not know. Oh, so speaking of, look at my special guest this afternoon, Michael and Tanya, War and Treaty. Man, you guys are some of my favorite people. I was just looking back. The last time we chatted, I don't know if you guys remember, it was Pilgrimage 2019, a very hot Saturday afternoon backstage. <laughs> oh, yes. It was so hot. And I had on a watermelon dress. It was that hot. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I, I, that was probably one of the first times I got to hear you in person, and it was amazing. I had the nerve to have on all black. <laughs> Thank you so much for that compliment. Well, look, there is there is something, there is a technique to wearing all black, Michael, because that way no one sees your sweat. Like for me, like I'm sweating. I don't want to, you know, you, you, that's kind of a good thing you got there. Thank you, Donna. Thank you for that. You, you've made me feel better. <laughs> so let's talk about your past year. You've had a big year since 2018, 2020 is a little shut down, but you still had a lot of things happening. I mean, you performed at the Grammys. Yes. Uh, you also performed at the ACNs with Dirk Bentley. I mean, I, you have a new album. And we're going to talk about all this. This is a lot to unpack. We'll, we'll go back and recap. You're performing with John Legend. You're going to open for John Legend here in town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think no, um, November. September, September 2nd. Uh, yeah. Is it the second? No, the first. September the first. You open in Atlanta and then you come back. It's the first. It's the second. It's, it's the, it's the <laughs> This is how Warren Treaty gets down. It is the, it's the there second. You go. Please don't listen to anything I say. It is, the, it is September the 2nd. Yes. September 2nd. Next yes. week. Yes. Ascend Amphitheater. I know that yes. part. I know that part. Yeah. <laughs> At least I remain quiet. <laughs> So let, let's back up. Tell me what that was like for you guys performing at the Grammys. I mean, to me, that is a pretty big stage, like national. Wow. What was that like? Oh, man. We're going to start with that one this, this, this early in the combo. <laughs> no, Donna, honestly, um, that was for me personally. And uh, I, I don't ever like to speak for Tanya. I always like to speak for for me this way i get in trouble but for me personally smart man for me personally <laughs> it was it was bittersweet very bittersweet because i am a huge sports fan and um the los angeles lakers and one said kobe bryant is probably my favorite basketball player of all time actually oh wow um, and it used to be michael and then kobe came along and and I, and I just was like yeah he has a little bit more of a chip in his shoulder um <laughs> and i had high hopes uh, a little birdie had told me that kobe would be attending the ceremony um as he normally tries to and uh you know i got a tour of the locker room because the Grammys was at the school center. And um, I just was really anticipating meeting one of my heroes. And that morning I, I woke up and, and, and joy was in the air. I went and got a quick uh, cleanup in, in the barber department. And we were in the limo line waiting to go and, and perform. And our agent called, and because my entire team knows how I feel about Kobe Bryant and the Los Angeles Lakers, and uh, called Tanya so that Tanya could, could, you know, break the news that it's a possibility. And this time it was just speculation. Um, they hadn't given an official word that uh, Kobe had, and and 
and nine others had perished. Um, but you could you could feel it in the Staples Center, and we 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 walked in, and <clears throat> no one really knew what to do. It was like right. talk, it was talk possibly postponing to the following week, but then you. We didn't know who we were going to run into having to do the funeral. I mean, no one really knew what to do because it was such a shock. Not only did we lose a Lakers legend, but we lost nine other bright spots in our world and and one in the form of Gigi, such a promising young lady. And um, our hearts and prayers went out to the Bryant family and still does. And how do you handle how do you swallow that i mean here it is the supposedly the biggest day of my musical career biggest day right. of my musical career and it's a struggle because now i'll forever remember that the first performance came at the news of the passing of of my basketball hero so it was very bittersweet but then as the black mamba will do he would say, hey, drive on. You got something to do. We got to handle this. So we stood on that stage alongside Ben Platt, Camille Cabea, uh, Common, Cindy, the legend herself, Lopper. Um, we were reminded about the power of music and how music can whisk people away from one perilous moment to one triumphant existent moment. So for me, that that is the perfect example I can say. Bittersweet. Uh, it was extremely bittersweet. And I mean, I just thought about all the times watching television as a little girl with my mom and my siblings. You know, the Grammy stage is like the stage that every artist wants to perform on and to be able to be on that stage with Michael um, was unbelievable. We were, we were in the tunnel, holding hands, nervous, palms sweating, watching all the celebrities walk past us. We were like little kids back then. It was, it was just amazing. It really was. And um, as Michael said, at the same time, um, just thinking of the memory of Kobe and what Kobe would do and being in that building was, um, it was very surreal. I can imagine. Yes. Wow. But you guys did it, and and I felt like that show, uh, the whole show, I didn't had a different feel, and maybe because you guys have kind of given us what was happening behind the scene, and there was no not knowing exactly what to do, but it kind of like the show needed to go on, and and I and I like the phrase always that music heals, and I feel like that's probably what everyone needed a little bit of healing. I think we've all needed that over the last year, right? Well, little did we know, right, that we as a country, we as a world would be would begin to transition into a dark age. We didn't know that. Right. I mean, that was like the start of something crazy. You know, whether it would be uh, some sudden tragic deaths of celebrities we love, like Kobe, like Chadwick Boseman or whether it be a dark period of uh, some visual, visible police brutality, maybe, um, a pitting of cultures and race again between uh, supposedly the only fight in our country is blacks versus whites. And, um, you know, um, we, would be, we would be pitted against one another again in a standoff and then pandemic a disease would happen and I think the unfortunate thing is as we begin to to try to live now with this disease we are still seeing some remnants of that ugliness that ugly behaviors um, <clears throat> between our human race and that's unfortunate so if there ever was a time where we needed our music to heal and to represent kindness and love and gratitude and thankfulness and civility and unity and community and the human thriving spirit that says we persevere in all things, 
this is definitely the time. And Tanya and I, we just want to be a, 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 a comma in that conversation. <clears throat> and I feel like you guys always are. I always feel like, for people who haven't heard you, it is like a spiritual moment. You guys come together. Your voices are so amazing when they come together. And then you're like, oh, this is what I needed right now. I don't know if people feel the same way. I feel that way when I've heard you guys. Oh, thank you so much. We, um, you know, it, it is a, a spiritual experience being on that stage and being able to know that um, the gifts that we have uh, at that moment, everyone has opened up their hearts to receive it at that time. And then we're open to receive the love that you all give us. And that's what gives the strength to keep going forward and to keep making music and seeing your smiles and reading comments and the messages messages that we get from so many people. It's so humbling. And at the same time, it's a reminder of, of why you have this gift. So it's an exchange that happens between us and you, Donna, and other people who listen to us. We couldn't do it without you. And thank you all for letting us do it with you. Yeah, I, I don't know that all artists have that kind of connection. And maybe not all artists are looking for that. Sometimes you just want to clap your hands and have fun and, you know, sing a silly song, which is fine. And that we ain't need those moments. But yours is so much different, I feel like. Well, I, Ty and I also have those moments to where we just want you, our audience and ourselves, to just clap and just have a good time maybe drink some wine or a couple of beers or whatever but um we also realize that there's a responsibility that comes with our art you know and that responsibility is to our own individual stories our story is it has been dipped and drenched and wrung out in the pool of healing and love and um we feel like it's very important that we're able to tell that story and we're able to to tell it with no hint of guilt or no hint of or trace of rage or anger but just simply say you know we believe in the human race we believe in each other we believe in you donna we believe in jack bart we believe in barry susie we believe that we can and that we will, and that we are going to make a difference. Mm. Okay, enough having us for the day. <laughs> it's Friday. We're going into the weekend. Let's talk about your upcoming um, tour with John Legend. So how did that come about? Tell me about that. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to hate this. <laughs> um, you know, when our agent called us, that 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 morning um in january at the grammys with with the cope news um you know he called Tanya, and i thought it was a different kind of news because the night before that he called my phone and he did not call tanya and he had some news and the news was john legend wants you to go on tour with him we were like <laughs> So that tour was supposed to happen in 2020. Oh. And that's where we got the news the day before the Grammys. In wow. Los Angeles. So again, this is what I mean when I say, you know, it's, it's crazy because this is another prime example of every moment is connected to the next or to the last, you know, and, and here we are talking to you in 2021 about something that is manifesting this year that was supposed to have manifested last year. Yeah. So that's, that's exactly how it happened. Um, John uh, became aware of us earlier in 2020 through a situation that we cannot speak of at the moment, but it's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful and, and it works and it's big. But from that introduction, he had made it his business to make sure that he would do his part in trying to further advance us as a band and as a musical force within our industry and within our world. And that is how it really took place. Mm. Yeah, and, and we have a son 
his name and Michael named Legend because of his his uh, adoration for John Legend. So that's a whole other story within itself. And Legend is 10 years old. So this has been manifesting for the last 10 years for us to to meet him. And here we are. <laughs> There's power in that. <laughs> power. Listen, so are you going to take your son to meet John Legend? Has he met him yet? I mean, you've done, have you done one show yet? No, we haven't done a show yet, but he is going. Legend is, is road school. So he will be <laughs> on the road with us. And he will have a chance to meet John Legend. <laughs> He's very okay. excited. Okay, I can't wait to follow up with you guys and find out how that went. Because that, to me, is going to be a great story that I'm going to need to hear at some point. <laughs> we can't. We would definitely meet where we follow up with you. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be your hometown. You haven't had a home, a lot of hometown performances. So this is kind of your hometown stop here how's that going to be for you guys being in nashville you know it's interesting um when we first moved to nashville i didn't want to move to nashville michael wanted us to move we were living in a small town <laughs> in albion michigan and i went kicking and screaming i was like i don't want to move to the town i want to be here it's small i can walk to the post office everything is i know everybody you know a little town like mayberry and when I came here and, and we spent time and the pandemic happened and we had an opportunity to be home and move around in the community, I fell in love with Nashville. You know, it's like, I like to call it the little Los Angeles of the South, you know? <laughs> and and it's, it's really nice. I really like it. And I love the people. I love the music community. So it's going to be an incredible um, show. It's going to be exciting. Our team there, like our friends are coming. And I mean, we're opening up for John Legend. You know, this is this is incredible. You know, it's so, it'll be so much right? fun, so fun and it's so humbling and so exciting at the same time. I have to feel like after I watched your performance on the ACMs with Dirk Bentley, did Dirk ask you to go on tour? Because I felt like he really into that performance and then he was looking for you guys to go with him, but you're already taken. You're like, sorry, John called first. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's so crazy because not it, it was a lot of different people wanting to go on tour, like Dirks, definitely. And um, we ended up doing some show. Well, we ended up doing Teleride with him. And, and okay, got a couple of recordings released from that, that session. And but then we went to the night of the ACMs, we went to an after party over at uh, TJ Osborne's house from Brothers Osborne. And oh, another John. incredible group. Love them. And then both TJ and John was like, so, man, what are you guys doing over the summer? You know, I think we should get the road together. We're like, yeah, about that. We... <laughs> we'll put you on our list. We'll get back to you. Don't worry. <laughs> you know, and it, it, it was really just cool because um, to see just different artists wanting to be with us. An artist who we want to be with, you know, um, Lauren Daigle is another one. We've 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 built a strong rapport with each other, and Lauren was like, she and I had a writing session. But before that, we opened for Lauren in 2019, and Lauren came over to us and grabbed us by our hands and said, "What can I do for you? Like, like what can I do?" And that kind of boldness, we're like, oh. <laughs> Just being you, I guess. I mean, you know, we, we really didn't, we were so caught off guard. But this time, um, she was like, do you want to, do y'all want to go on tour together? And she's doing her first stadium tour. So we'll be at, in November, um, the very last date in November is at Bridgestone. Oh, so you'll be back in town. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. We have a day off once we finish the John Legend tour, and then we start the Lauren Daigle tour. So we'll be gone from our sweet Nashville for about three months. <laughs> I did not realize that you were teaming up with Lauren Daigle, another incredible artist. Her voice. Okay, short story about Lauren. The very first time I met her, it was her very first red carpet event. I think it was for the K Love Awards. And she was so nervous and so, like, it was just so fun to meet her at that time. And then now, look at her. The, that was probably six or seven years ago. So, 
That's amazing. And she's she's stunning and beautiful and so much fun. So much fun. So much fun. Her energy is so infectious. I mean, what I love about her is when you meet her, she it's like she is a brand new artist. She's so excited about life, about music, about getting on that stage, about her fans. It just rejuvenates me just to look at her. She's just like a ball of energy. <laughs> she is. That is very true. She is. She is. Oh, wow. Well, it's been great to catch up with you again. I could talk to you guys all afternoon, but I know you guys got things to do. Thank you. A weekend to get ready. A tour to start. You're leaving us. <laughs> Oh, thank you so, so much again for taking the time to talk to us. And we can't wait to do this again soon. I know. I know. Yes. So if you guys get the chance, looks like you've got two chances locally. Next week, Ascend Amphitheater. And then again in November at Bridgestone. So let's hope everything holds out and we can see you guys maybe twice in Nashville. Awesome. All right, tell everybody where to find more information. You got music, you got some music out, and it's got all the info where you're going to be. Obviously, I did not see the Lauren Daigle thing, though, so that's on me. <laughs> yes, but it's okay. Um, www.thewarentreaty.com, and from there, you can access all of our socials, all of our music, all of our merch. We have some very cool merch items available from our CDs and projects all the way down to apparel and socks and also be on a lookout for Tanya's, uh, her launch. She has She Loves Vintage, where she uh, puts out uh, uh, um, her very own uh, Miss Darling series. And it's beautiful apparel from suitcases to handbags, as well as T-shirts and sweatshirts. And who knows, maybe she'll be kind enough to throw on there one of her dresses. Aww. So um, please go and visit oh. All right. You guys, please go check it out. Tani has great style, you guys, so you should check it out as well. All right. Great to see you again. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Hope you have a great weekend. If you need something to do, we've got a whole list of things to do. And then obviously next week, go see our friends, The War and Tree. All right. See you soon. Bye, everybody.